Hey guys, we are so excited to finally bring this video request to you guys. You guys have asked and we have listened. We are going to be doing a video on how do you know which puppy to pick out in a litter of Connie Corsos. So if you've ever wondered, oh, this puppy is so cute, but is it actually what a Connie Corso is supposed to look like? Watch this video. This is a bunch of research that we've done and put together because to be honest, we don't actually, we didn't actually know uh, the answer. So that's another reason this video took so long, but we are excited uh, to share with you guys everything we learned on how you yourself can go to a breeder and look at their Corso pups and decide, yeah, you know what, this one is very promising. It looks the standard, you know, everything checks out. Because, you know, if, if anything that I'm learning through this process, you can't really trust anyone. You have to look out for yourself. So this video will help you to have the knowledge you need to pick out a puppy if you are looking for one that's, you know, breed quality, uh, show standard, you name it. But for anyone that's also interested in a companion puppy, you should also be aware of, of looking to breed standard as well because there can be health issues if they're not to standard or if something's off and there can also be issues um, with their temperament. If they've been mixed with a different breed of dog, you're not gonna have a Cane Corso, you're gonna have something else, which may be okay, but if you're not informed with the knowledge of what your breed is, it can be very challenging for a trainer, for your vet, for people to figure out what's going on. They do offer DNA tests, but we've just seen from one of our friends that that doesn't always help. So uh, we're just going to dive right into this one. Um, first and foremost, there is this book here, Il Cane Corsos. It's actually been translated into English. Um, probably the best wealth of knowledge we found on the breed, pictures of the original dogs that were used, back in the day to uh, get this breed going again in Southern Italy. So, you know, number one, if you haven't got this book, get it. It's on the Cane Corso Chronicles, not affiliated with us, but the CCAA, which is the Cane Corso Club of America, has a uh, published, I think it's a, a magazine, an online magazine, and through their website, which we will link below, you can get this book. Speaking of the Cane Corso, uh, or the Cane Corso um, Association of America, which is the AKC uh, Cane Corso Club, they have an awesome PowerPoint presentation which goes through what's the breed standard and what isn't. Because if you are like us, we found a look that we loved. Oh my gosh, these dogs are adorable. I love their head. It's so magnificent, so royal looking, only to find out, oh, you know what? That's not actually to standard. So, okay, what do we want to do? You know, why do we even have a breed standard? So let's talk about that. Breed standard was created to look at the health of the dog, the mobility of the dog, what the dog was created to do, what, you know, uh, gates it needs in its movement to be able to be a working dog, um, and just to really keep breeders focused and give buyers something that if they are going to go with a purebred dog, that this is what we should strive for. This is what we looked for when we, you know, uh, brought the Cane Corso dogs back into a, a good population size and you know it, it gives us a target um, not to say that should never change but I think the, the target has been set um, you know at least in, in looks we're not going to go into temperament in this video but we're definitely going to dive into the looks so number one if you can afford hundred dollars or less usually Bring an AKC judge with you that's at least an Aubrey judge and has some familiarity with Cane Corsos. Go to AKC's website and just search for judges in your local area. Or if you're having issues, reach out to me. I'd rather help you guys so you guys make a good informed purchase on your Corso than 
you know, thinking that, hey, I can just watch this video and pick a great dog. I hate to break it to you, only experience is going to give you what you need to truly look at a puppy and know, you know, how it's going to grow up. And even then, there's no guarantees. You know, the dog can grow up being perfectly show quality, you can have a weird growth spurt, something happens, something doesn't develop, and that's why every single contract that you will see, it will say we cannot guarantee the quality of our pups at time of selection. And, the, and there is no refund. So, you know, over time you will begin to, to learn what you need to learn, see what you need to see. And one of the things we're excited about doing and we're nowhere close is, you know, showing our pups and how they grow. Here's the look they were at birth. Here's what they look like at one year, two year, three year. Um, and it's actually in our contract. So we can start to, to collect the data. Like this is what the pup's head looked like at birth and this is how it developed. And so, you know, eventually by the time we have that data, AI should be a lot cheaper and we can, you know, maybe have some sort of tool for breeders to say, okay, you know, this is the facial features, this is how they've grown in the first eight weeks based on the algorithm, this is what the dog's going to look like. But, okay, I'm dreaming and getting off topic, but, you know, there is no guarantees on what your dog is going to look like. We don't have AI software. Breeding the first time has literally killed our budget so we're nowhere close to to getting to that point so you can help us out though if you're watching this still up to this point as we're about to get into the meat of the information like this video put a happy face in the comments just something because that helps our YouTube algorithm to get our video out there if you're not getting likes and comments they assume that your video is not something that people like so, you know, we've taken a lot of time out of our uh, family time and even, you know, time with the puffs to try and make this video for you guys. So if you are watching, please just like and comment. Really, really would appreciate it. So yes, number one, you need an AKC judge if you can find one and can afford it to go with you. That will give you as much peace of mind as you would need to make a good decision with the experience if you don't have some. You know what? Not everyone can afford that. I'm already spending money on a top quality dog. I don't have an extra hundred bucks. Okay, fine, no problem. You know, watch this video. Get to see what we've been able to learn and put together based on our time with Lou from O. Scott Cavaliers who judged our dogs because she also has a Cane Corso um, and is an all breed judge. So she was awesome. We've done our best to cut those clips up um, and put them together based on the standard, which we took from the Il Cane Corso book. So th there are many multiple standards for the Cane Corso, depending which kennel club you're looking at. We use the one in the original, um, there, <laughs> there's a lot of politics in the Corso world, but we took the one from the Il Cane Corso book. Whether that's the original standard or not is to be debated, but it's definitely a traditional very knowledgeable standard. Um, so they have pictures and uh, of what's good and what's false and what's disqualification. So a fault is something where this is not too standard, this is not good, but it's not, ah, this dog should, you know, never be bred, okay? So on our male Logan, he has a, I think two faults, I would say, his top line, He's not perfect. His back doesn't slope down 100%. He has just a slight curve up, um, minor, but it's still something that we took into consideration with breeding him. Also, his rear legs don't have the perfect angulation um, that we've seen um, and could be a lot better. He has a really nice head. He has really nice shoulders and chest, and he's passed that on to all of our puppies. But when we chose to breed Phoenix, she was perfect. Top female pick of her litter. You know, she's small, but she is 100% too standard. Um, and she just has an awesome top line. Great head. Um, just looks, looks really, really good. So um, we... Sorry, a lot of background noise happening here. Apologies. But yeah, we chose to breed them and they did better than we expected. So 
all that to just tell you that a fault is, you know, not the end of the world. Hey, honey, you're on video. Uh, so a fault is not the end of the world. Uh, disqualification, you should think long and hard about definitely not breeding those dogs because um, that is something that really, really is way off on the breed and chances are they're going to pass that on. So um, I'm not an expert in genetics yet. Um, that's going to come with experience. So I'm not sure. Um, but from, from my gut, I would say if you have a disqualification, that dog really should be uh, com companion quality. And depending on how many faults the dog has, probably should also consider that being a companion pup. Um, but the other good thing about informing yourself of this knowledge is different breeders will charge you more based on a show breed prospect. So, um, it is true that you should be paying more for those dogs if you want to be a breeder. Um, and even if you, you don't want to be a, a breeder or show the dogs, you're taking that dog away from someone who, who might have. And so... You know that's that's getting off topic but you know th those dogs are worth more money because they have a, the potential to to produce pups um and they have the potential to win championships and do well in shows and you know the standard dogs have a much better chance at at being quite healthy so um you want to be informed because if a breeder tells you, yeah, this dog is show quality, you know, it's an extra $500, but it has some faults, maybe you don't go with that breeder and you move on to another. Or maybe you can negotiate and say, you know, based on what I'm looking at here, I, I don't like, you know, why do you think this is a show quality? And so again, we'll leave that out, but you know, I definitely, Thank you guys for suggesting this video. I think it will empower a lot of you guys if you're going out to buy a Connie Corso pup. And, you know, we've just done our best as being new people to uh, breeding and really judging uh, to bring you this video. So don't take it as your Bible of what's a uh, Corso to standard or not. We included a lot of other content from the Ilkhani Corso book because we just are not the experts here. So we're deferring to, to that book. Highly recommend that you guys buy it um, to get all the information. And, um, you know, also go through the Kane Corso Association of America PowerPoint on how to judge a Corso, which we will also link below. And those things are, are really what you should be doing to learn the standard in addition to, to watching this video. This is meant to just give you a taste. So let's dive right in and see what the standard is all about. All right, so this is a good example illustration wise. It's not an actual Connie Corso, but this is a good example of the, the standard. So. What you're looking for is a nice block head, which, you know, the top line of the head should come down like that. The muzzle should come out uh, perpendicular. Um, the muzzle should be s not square, but should look block blocky. And uh, we'll go into that in more detail. Um, nice, nice, strong shoulders. The shoulders should be, you know, pronounced and present. Nice, strong chest. The feet should be pointing straight out. Um, they shouldn't be to the sides. They should be straight out, aligned with their legs, and they should have tight cat-like feet and not webbed toes. In their top line, it should come down and, and slope. Um, the croup here you know, does stick up a little tiny bit, but generally it comes down and it's a nice straight pronounced top line. So that's what you're looking for um, with the top line. In the rear, they should have, you know, a nice angled leg. You know, like I was saying earlier, our male's fault is his leg doesn't quite stick out that much um, in his natural stance. 
So that's where we give him a fault. But in, in this one, you could see there's a really nice angle versus, you know, a straight leg up and down. And then the chest is very balanced. It doesn't start, you know, way down and come up um, underneath. It, it, it's very balanced. And, you, you know, the Corso is an athletic dog. You should always be able to see a rib or two on them. Um, otherwise, they can be considered overweight in my opinion. Um, people that really work their corsos um, and keep them very active, they have a lot of ribs showing. So don't always assume if you see a corso that it's underweight, it could just be um, a, a very active working dog. Um, so that's completely normal. So that's kind of an overview of what you're looking for. Now we'll go into each uh, area of the dog and go into a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's go into the head. This is the correct head. Okay, so again, you have a angled top, straight line, and a straight uh, muzzle. So you have some faults here. You know, the, the muzzle actually can be too long. You, you rarely hear of that today. Um, the muzzle should be shorter than the top of the head. So that's a fault if it's too long. Um, the muzzle should not be slanted. It should be straight. So if it's slanted, you know, that's a fault. Um, the head should also not be straight up top. The top of the head, like we showed here, should have a slight slant down. It should not be perpendicular or parallel, sorry, to the muzzle. Not a math expert. Um, so those are all faults, but a disqualification is when, you know, you have the muzzle going upwards and the head straight, and they call it a divergence. So um, that's some some examples of what you definitely don't want and you really you know want to get that nice angle where you have it slanting downwards at the top of the head the skull and the muzzle is um, parallel to, to the ground okay so here we are actually looking at this line here Okay, and how it lines up with the muzzle. On the Corso, the front part of the muzzle should be 90 degrees, perfectly straight. Um, the boxer mouth, you know, is where the bottom, you know, sticks, sticks out. So they kind of have that slanted muzzle that sticks out. Um, and so that is a fault. Okay, and then the same is also true of the opposite way of the angle. The muzzle should not come in like a, a pointer type of dog. Um, again, dequalification if it's more than um, 95 degrees slant. Um, the... So yeah, that's definitely a declassification. And here, if it's, you know, the boxer, boxerish look, if it's less than 80 degrees, so it doesn't stick out more than 80 degrees, and the head doesn't look like a, a boxer, it's tolerated. So that's just something to be, to bear in mind that, um, you know, the actual angle of the front of the muzzle is, is important as well. Okay, if the top of the node bridges upwards, considered a tent, that's a fault. If the upper part of their mouth is an upside down V, that's a fault. If the nostrils are closed and this part is very uh, fleshy, the wings, that's a fault. So this is the correct look. You'll see that the the side of the nostrils are are nice and tight, wide open nostrils. You got a flat 
uh, muzzle. It's not tented upwards or downwards. And you have a nice U shape, you know, a nice open area from where the top of the mouth meets the uh, bottom of the mouth. And, and the jowls, you know, I, we, it doesn't talk about the jowls that much, but the jowls should not be drooping way down either. Okay, so when you're looking sideways, you're looking at the bridge of the nose. Again, nice straight line, like a box. The nose should also follow that. Um, these are faults. So if the top of the nose is rounded, if the top of the nose sticks out, if it's a Roman nose and slopes down, if it is concave and slopes up, if the top of the, the bridge of the nose is not straight and has a, uh, a raise in it, that's also a fault. So again, no disqualifications with the nose, but those are faults. Okay, and so the top of the skull should be 66% of the uh, length of the head and the muzzle should be 34%. Okay, if it's too short of a muzzle, it's a fault. If it's too long, it's a fault. So the muzzle at its root, so from top to bottom, is at least um, half more than its length, okay? And this is a really good view um, to show you that it really is a box head versus any type of cone head. So the muzzle should not narrow and, you know, should not have a cone head. And ironically, one of our pups who is a top female, you know, has a um, more feminine smaller nose and so it's something that we have to talk about because she could just be in a growth spurt um, given that that wasn't the case um, even at probably seven weeks old there was no sign of this so um, but now that she's growing and her skull is nice and, and square but her muzzle um, is definitely more feminine and she has a smaller nose. So again, um, we have to consider that that could be a, a fault for her if she doesn't grow out of it. So it, it's really hard to tell on puppies what they're going to do. And it's something that you may want to check in on week after week um, or go with a breeder that will you know, has the experience and referrals to, to show you that their show picks are actually show quality when they grow up, even though we really can't guarantee it. All right, so this is a really good example of what to look for. I've, I've actually seen some of these. Um, so the muscle should actually be kind of like an upside down, gosh, I just did the shape with my daughter, but I can't think of it, but it should be, you know, squared up top, but slanting downwards and a wide uh, bottom. And that's where you see it really should be a U instead of a, a V because here it's pointing in and here you want it pointing out and a square is also a fault. So that's a... Uh, really good to keep in mind and again on a puppy I would say this doesn't come out till about eight weeks so if you are picking a dog um, early you know it's, it's tough because if you are wanting to do pick of the litter you know uh, and the breeder makes you pick first first pick you're pr probably going to not see all these so I, I would encourage you guys to work with a breeder that would have their dogs judged um, professionally or uh, will let you wait until they're about eight weeks old to to pick because they they really change so much so this is another good drawing because it shows you that there is a difference between a male and a female um, the male has a much wider head than the female Okay, so this is a hypertrophy of the temporal region. 
um, where the, the just the, the skull is way too big. You get away from the the block head look, and you know it's just a very wide looking uh, head. I typically see I have seen actually quite a few courses with this, and it looks like they've been bred with a pit bull, but I don't know if that's the case or not. Again, you don't want the opposite um, aged or very wrinkly or very bony looking. Um, and, and you don't want a completely flat skull either. So again, a lot of information um, here. The key is just looking for that well-balanced head with a, a very strong muzzle. And I think that's the best way to um, take a look. Again, um, when you take a look at that head, you also want to see where the eye placement is. So... This is the ideal placement. So the eyes kind of align with the top of the nose and they have a slight angle upwards. Um, anything else is subpar. But you can see how important angles are. I think this is a, a disc qualification here or the eyes are definitely flat on at a zero degree angle and so this is just another nice close-up picture of what a cropped ear would look like versus the the natural ear on a on a solid traditional looking head all right, so now we're gonna go into uh, looking at how our AKC judge, Miss Lou, looked at our dog's heads. And um, that way you can see what she touched, what she felt, so you guys can emulate it when you are going to pick out your puppy. All right, so once you check the head on your dog, you wanna check for their bite. And Miss Lou does that by just sticking her finger inside the mouth of the puppy, which we will show you, and feeling uh, the bite. So you should have a slight uh, underbite, which they call a protagonism. Um, excessive pro um, underbite, fault, um, a pincer bite where it's pretty much one-on-one -on -one is tolerated. Um, but again, if you're in the show ring and you have a tolerated bite versus a correct bite, the correct bite will, um, will take the point if all is fair, which it often isn't. But um, a scissor bite is a fault. That's where you have um, an overbite. The top teeth go over the, the, the bottom. And um, if you have a large uh, overbite um, where the top overshoots um, the bottom, it's disqualifying. So who knew inside the mouth is so important? Um, often in the rings, the judges will let the handlers check this, but this is a disqualifier. So it's very important to check your dog's bite to make sure that the, uh, the bottom teeth come out just slightly um, over the, the top teeth. Okay, so now that we've got the head checked, you wanna move on with your puppy to check the neck, the shoulders, and the chest. Okay, so they should have a nice long neck, um, but it, sh it should be thick. It shouldn't be too thin and it, it shouldn't be too, too heavy. It should be nice and balanced and, and straight. Okay. Um, the shoulders here should also 
um, you know, not be too heavy or too light. So it's all about balance um, with the corso. And um, the chest should be nice and pronounced, but it should not be uh, too low, where again, you don't have that nice angle, which should start near the top of the legs. Um, there's a lot more information, as you can see, um, but you gotta buy the book for that. Um, I don't wanna have any copyright issues, so, um, you know, this is just a, a quick peek at um, what you need to look at. Okay, so now we've looked at the head, the shoulders, the chest, and the neck. And so lastly, you want to look at the top line um, and make sure, again, you're looking really for that sloping to continue from the neck to the shoulders and to the top line. So that's what it should look like. And here are some faults. If the underneath... Um, is too high that's um i'm not going to pronounce it but that's what it's called a weak top line as you can see here it should be straight but it slopes in so you really want that nice consistent slope um here there's a, a heavier trunk but you know it's too straight so you don't have that nice balance of the dog um, that we were looking at before and you know this is the the top line you see where it doesn't have that gradual slope it goes up and then comes down it just goes straight out so the slope is really important and um, the top line at least is something that's very easy to look at um, you just stack the dog and and take a look back so we'll take a um, look at one of our top females and uh, she is a perfect example of all of these uh, features on on what you want to look for on a very nice um, dog puppy with great shoulders nice chest and a very strong top line Okay, so now we've looked at the head, the shoulders, the chest, the top line, the, um, oh, the word's escaping me, but basically the overall, overall proportion of the dog. So now we're going to go on to hindquarters. And so basically what's really important here is when your dog is stacked, you should be able to see this nice angle. And so um, when you are experienced, you're able to really see those angles. Um, another I guess cheat way to do it is if you look at the rear, that um, toe should completely align with where the the rear ends, um, which is a sign of a good angle. So that's what you're looking for. A completely straight leg is uh, definitely a fault, um, but that nice angulation is what's uh, really needed for a strong rear. As the dog ages, the muscles in the hindquarters should be very strong and powerful and um, on actually both the, the hindquarters and the forequarters, the legs should have really nice strong bone and muscles. So um, that's what you're looking for when you do the hindquarters and we will show you um, 
actually an example of one of our dogs who has a fault and uh, one of them again are one of our females who has really really nice uh, rear angulation. Lastly, you want to look at the feet of the dog and their forequarters and hindquarters. Um, you want to make sure that this is what they look like. Really nice, balanced, proportioned, and parallel to the, to the body. Um, narrow forequarters is a fault. Forequarters is a fault. Um, open elbows is a fault, kind of like us being bow-legged. Towing in is a fault and towing out is a fault. So again, you really want that nice straight look. Pretty much the exact same thing goes for the rear. You want that nice straight in line with the body hindquarters. You don't want the hawks um, barreling outwards. You don't want them closing in. You don't want them uh, what they call cow hawked, um, where the hawks are almost touching, or the feet um, that come out so far at the back that they don't align up with the body, they're out too far. So those are all faults. And then for the feet, it should be a cat-like foot. Yes, the courses have webbed feet, but they should not be webbed looking in appearance. So they should be nice, tight, and, and closed. And so you can see this one right here is the correct one. Um, and these ones right here are considered a fault. So anything that's oval or um, spread out is, is a fault. Okay, so that pretty much concludes our video on how to pick a puppy based on breed standard. And um, hopefully you guys get to know a little bit more from watching this video on what a traditional uh, Connie Corso should look like from their head to their top line to their feet and everything in between. I'm going to show you guys some bonus footage now of the uh, Connie Corso Association of America website so you can get a sneak peek at what their course looks like for judging, which is open and free to everyone, as well as where you can go to order the Il Cane Corso book in the English version. Um, so if you do click the link below, you know you're in the right spot. So thank you guys so much again for watching. And again, please like this video, comment, even if it's a happy face. Um, and subscribe if you haven't already for more great videos as we get to learn the Kane Corso breed together. We just have a little guest star here, um, but basically you just search for Il Kane Corso English and it's the Kane Corso magazine. Yes, yes, yes. And so here it is. You just click here. And this is the actual legitimate site. It, it does seem weird. I was nervous to order it on here, but you order it and it comes, um, you know, comes right away. And actually this one is in, okay. You know what, I don't know if this is right. Okay, so this is the correct site. Um, and you just have to change the currency and your country at the top. Um, which will sh show you the price of the book. So it is expensive if you get one.
But that's gonna conclude our video because Miss Jordan has had enough. All right, thanks guys. Hope you guys love it. Bye.